Hello, Maker Melissa, Maker Melissa's Lab. In this video, we'll be finishing up the Prusa enclosure build. This is the third video in the series. The first video was the initial enclosure build. The second one was the MMU2S build itself. And then the third one will be finishing up putting both of the parts together. Let's get started. You may remember in the first video I had mentioned I had lost my metric drill bits. Well, I happened to find them between videos and this is what they look like. I got them on eBay. I don't have a specific link or anything like that, but you can just search on eBay for a metric drill bit set and you should come up with a similar set. In this next step, I'm gonna be installing the spool holder. It's actually in three pieces. When it was first printing, it looked like it was kind of warping and lifting up, but as you can see, it actually ended up being fine here. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach this, and these will fit in here with some little rods that came with the uh, spool holders that came with the printer. And here it is on the cabinet. As you can see, I put these little metal rods that came with the printer in here, and they fit perfectly. I didn't need any bearings or anything. So to put the roll on, all you do is take that off, slip the roll in, and you can put it in. You don't have to worry about putting the whole thing in there. Um, there's a little bit of a gap here between the three and the four, but the rod seems to fit just fine, so I'm not worried at all about that. Next, we're gonna go ahead and replace a couple parts on the buffer piece here, and that way we can go ahead and attach it down. Okay, I've gone ahead and replaced the brackets there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and mount this on to the cabinet, and I'm gonna make sure these little tubes are facing towards the spool holders. And here it is. Now that I've finished the top part, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare the other table so I can set it on top of here. I'm gonna start by putting on the anti-vibration feet, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put the little brackets in order to attach the two tables together. Okay, now I have all four of the vibration dampening feet on here. As you can see, you can kind of adjust the height of them so that if you're on unlevel ground, you can go ahead and turn it until it's feeling not sticking and then it won't shake so much. I'm gonna leave a link to both the leveling feet in the description and the anti-vibration pads that it uses as well. Okay, now that we have the feet on here, we're gonna go ahead and attach these pieces. I'm gonna attach them with number six by three quarter inch screws, which are the same kind that I used for the feet. And these are just gonna go right up to the corner and, and attach with one screw here. The, the way that they work is they have the little br bracket on the inner part here, so you don't really see them. And you can actually remove the table if you want. I figure if for some reason it's like shaky or anything like that, I can always just take a drill and drill a couple holes in here and put a couple screws on the inside if I need to. But I'm not gonna do that for now. I'm hoping the weight of it and the anti-vibration feet will be enough for it. Okay, now that we have the feet on here, we're gonna go ahead and attach these pieces. I'm gonna attach them with number six by three quarter inch screws, which are the same kind that I used for the feet. And these are just gonna go right up to the corner and, and attach with one screw here. The, the way that they work is they have the little br bracket on the inner part here, so you don't really see them. And you can actually remove the table if you want. I figure if for some reason it's like, shaky or anything like that, I can always just take a drill and drill a couple holes in here and put a couple screws on the inside if I need to. But I'm not gonna do that for now. I'm hoping the weight of it and the anti-vibration feet will be enough for it. And there we go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the table on top of there. And here it is. 
One thing I forgot to mention earlier is instead of having the spools of filament directly on these, you actually have to put these little spindles on here and then put them on. So I'm going to go ahead and put all five of those on right now. And here it is. Next we're going to go ahead and make a couple modifications to the printer, including PTFE tube length, which we have to go down to 535 millimeters. Then we're going to go ahead and put an angle connector, which I had previously printed off, onto the heat bed so that it doesn't quite need to go back as far. And then we're going to go ahead and remove the power supply and put a little bracket where the frame was like I tried to do in the first video. To get this on here, you actually have to flip these wires over, so that's what I'm going to go ahead and do first. And here we go. The reason that we wanted to have the cord off to the side is that way instead of having it sticking straight out like it was before and hitting against the back wall, now it goes off to the side here. Next I'm going to go ahead and remove all the PTFE tubes from here and I'm going to go ahead and shorten them. Okay, I've gone ahead and shortened the PTFE tubes. I used a very sharp X-Acto blade, one that I don't believe I had used before because I wanted to be very sure I didn't crush these and I kind of cut them and they sliced very nicely and they're very round at the end here. I went ahead and I loosened this part about a centimeter and I pulled all the tubes up first. I cut them and then I went ahead and I inserted them and retightened them. I didn't have to worry about the nut falling out and that worked out really well. Next I'm going to go ahead and take off the power supply and I'm going to be putting on this new bracket. I already have all the nuts in here so it's just going to go in place of that in order to keep the frame solid because this is going to be mounted on the underside of the cabinet. Okay I've gone ahead and removed the power supply and now I'm going to go ahead and place the bracket on. There, I've gone ahead and secured the brace, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this onto its side here, and I'm going to cut the, each of these zip ties, pull all the power wires out of the bundle, and then put new zip ties in its place. Okay, there, I've gone ahead and removed the wires from all the zip ties except the one on the end, and the reason I did that is I wanted to act as kind of a strain relief. It's possible I may have to go ahead and remove it anyways if it needs me to give me a couple more centimeters or something, but I'm going to leave it like this for now. Uh, one of these feet came off while I was moving the printer, so I'm just going to go ahead and reattach it by just pushing it in and twisting it here. I've gone ahead and placed the printer in here. The way that you're supposed to do this is you position the printer so that the orange part here is a, acts as a doorstop gone ahead and fed the wires down here. What I found worked best is you have to do the skinny wire first, which is black and white, and then as you feed the subsequent wires in, kind of push it up, feed the wires in, and then pull the bundle down, and then kind of do that until you get all the five of the little wires down there. I also fed the tubes up the back here, and I'm going to go ahead and put the little cable holder into here. Mine had kind of broken into two pieces, but that's okay. Since I'm mounting the power supply on the underside, I don't need to feed any cables into here. Okay, I've gone ahead and mounted the power supply under here. All I have left to do is hook up these wires, and I need to hook up the tubes into the buffer, and then it's ready to test, I believe. Um, at this point, all the plastic parts that I have printed for this thing are on here. And then it's ready to calibrate and do a test print. And here's the power supply all hooked up. Now to go hook up the tubes. Okay, I've gone ahead and attached all the tubes here along with some screws to hold them in place. So you can see two to three millimeters inside here and then put the little screws in. Uh, the order I put it on is if you go one, two, three, four, five here, then it goes one, two, three, four, five in order of the tubes. Next I'm going to go ahead and get this whole thing into place where I'm going to actually print on it on a regular basis and I'm going to go ahead and put some filament in it. 
and get a test print all loaded up and try that out. Okay, I've gone ahead and moved it into place and placed my filament on the shelf. Now let's go ahead and start by printing a single color item. I'm going to go ahead and print a Benchy right off the SD card. Okay, it's been about a week and a half since I recorded the first part. I've been fighting the printer uh, for quite a while now. I actually had uh, tried printing with it for like all the day and I could not get it working. I emailed tech support. I didn't hear back for a few days, but uh, they did kind of help point me in the right direction without actually helping me. Um, what was happening was whenever I tried to print, it would, it, I was just running into all sorts of problems. I was actually about ready to give up and say like, I don't recommend this, but this actually has a better ending than that. For a while now, I kept getting prints that were just, just a few layers deep at most with it, and then it would either not stick to the bed, which is a problem I'd been having with the printer for a while, the powder-coated bed, where it won't stick to it sometimes right after you clean it until you've tried printing a few times, and then it works great after that. Eventually, I got to where I was printing a little bit more layers, and before it would unstick. But most of the time what was happening was it appeared the MMU-2S unit and the uh, extruder were fighting each other. You can actually see on there that it was grinding away the filament. So what they told me in the tech support email is that the IR filament sensor wasn't working, but I had actually tested that out and it was working. What it ended up being was a couple different things that I mostly needed to adjust. Uh, for one, I had this little bit of stringing here that had been caught inside of the extruder and this was actually stopping any new filament from going in. Um, another problem I had is I had to realign my bond tech gears inside the extruder because they weren't quite meshing. What I ended up doing is I put in filament because of the new chimney part in there. I think it caused the alignment to be off a little bit more. Anyway, I loosened the gear, I put the filament in there, and then when it was good, then I tightened it, and now it's meshing great. I had to make sure that the idler screw on the filament door was not too tight and not too loose, and what seemed to be working great for me is when you tighten the little screw with the spring on it until you could just see it finally go through the washer on the little door that sort of flips up. Another problem I was having was I didn't have the little part that raises up and down for selecting the different filaments. I didn't have the tension right on that and I actually had to tighten that. Anyway, once I got all the things uh, lined up and adjusted, which the manual could definitely stand to be a lot better in terms of telling you exactly what needs to be done. But there was enough information. Anyway, once I was done, I got it so it finally printed a Benchy and it actually looks really good. I actually have my original Benchy here, which I printed off when I first assembled the printer and I'm comparing them and mostly it's like exactly the same even on certain defects like some banding or whatever. However, I did notice on the chimney, it's actually a little bit better quality because there was a little bit of, I'm not sure what you call it, where it kind of puckers out along this uh, line here. And I cut it off with a knife or whatever, but it's actually really smooth on this one. So there was a slight quality improvement, which is really good. One thing you can see on these two benches is uh, the first one I printed on the smooth bed and part of the problem I was having is I printed this on the powder coated bed and it wasn't loving sticking to it but it did get to it and I knew it should be able to so I figured if I could get it to it then we're gonna be good. So once that was good I went ahead and I printed off this case which I've been really wanting to do since probably before I finished the last video and the printer was not in a state where I could print it at that time. So I went ahead and I printed this and the first one I went to go print, 
the extruder had clogged and I realized the reason that it had clogged was because I had the top down and the doors closed and it got a little bit hot in there and for PLA you do not want that and so I think what happens is it cut the melty PLA kind of starts going up the extruder and then it hardens in there and then it jams it. What I ended up doing was taking an X-Acto knife and carving inside that little PTFE tube inside the extruder so that it wasn't any wider at the top than it was throughout the rest of the extruder. And then I took this hex key which is the, I believe the smallest one that came with the printer and it's just slightly less wide than a piece of filament and I just kind of pushed that down inside because filament just kept snapping off in half and I was able to get it so I was able to push past the jam so it went down into the part of the hot end where it's actually going to go and melt and then I would go ahead and continue printing and that ended up good. So I actually got a full case on the second attempt. So then I decided to do a multicolor print and I found these uh, dice on Thingiverse. I can go ahead and link it down in the description. Uh, these were actually created by a, another YouTuber that I like to follow. Now to do the multicolors like this, and what it does is it creates a purge tower, which is what we have here. Now in the middle of this color print, I did have the printer jam up because I did the same thing where I had the lid closed and it jammed up. I was able to use the wrench without taking the whole extruder apart. And you can kind of see where on the purge tower where it kind of layer shifted. And the reason it layer shifted on the purge tower only was because after it jammed it started oozing out a whole bunch of film into one spot and I had to take some cutters and cut off that blob off of there. And when I was doing that, it ended up moving the perch tower. So I went ahead and left some of the footage I captured and I was able to go ahead and use this glue stick that came with the printer and kind of glued the perch tower down in approximately the right place. It looks like I was just off by like part of a millimeter, which is pretty good for just visually seeing it in some shots that I took. Another thing that I did is on the lid when I had put the plastic pieces on it had these little tabs here and I took a, an X-Acto knife and I went ahead and I trimmed them down since I didn't need them anymore and it looks a lot better on there. I had a couple of the little spool rollers come and fall onto the floor and they cracked a little bit and they're still usable, it's just like a tiny bit of a chipping. And I can always go ahead and print off more of those spoolers if I want. Uh, another issue that I had with the printer was when I tried feeding it in some of the files, it would actually reset the printer. And the way I worked around that is I went and I took Prusa Slicer and I sliced it for the MMU2S with either a single filament or multi-filaments. Now with the multi-filaments, what you could do is when you feed it in, you actually feed separate models into it and then you tell which of those models is for the which of the filaments you want to do. So I knew I had the silver in the first one and then the red in the second one. And so I just lined it up on there and I decided to do two dice on there because I figured it with the way that it's going to be wiping that the wipe tower actually would not be any bigger and you know it's more fun when you have two dice than instead of one. You can just roll them. And I just got a five. But the perch tower here actually was would have been the exact same size if I had chosen just to do one dice. So I hope you enjoyed this long awaited video and if you did go ahead and hit like and subscribe if you aren't already and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.